Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, October 7th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about mail-in voting, absentee ballot requests, a very reminiscent topic from the 2020 presidential election in a day and age of the COVID-19 pandemic, where back then almost, uh, you know, a considerable portion of the American public voted by mail for the first time ever. Some states actually sent out mail-in ballots to every single citizen. This time, we're back to a more normal era of elections, even though American politics really hasn't been normal uh, for a very long time. But when it comes down to the issue of absentee ballots and mail-in ballots, the Democratic Party has consistently outpaced Republicans on the issue of mail-in voting and absentee ballot requests, and that matters a lot for an election that is expected to be so exceptionally close. Now, on your screen right now is an article from the New York Times discussing how in Pennsylvania, the Republicans lag Democrats in early mail ballot requests. But this really just isn't the state that this uh, trend line seems to end in. You're looking at other battleground states like Florida, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And a big question for Republicans that they've been asking themselves is, can we get voters out to vote by mail? Now, to give you a bit of preface and understanding as to why mail-in voting really does matter for both sides of the aisle and why it actually helps one party over the other if they're constantly outpacing the opposition on, when it comes down to mail-in voting is for a variety of different reasons. The first end of things we would have to look at are issues like higher turnout. Areas where the Democratic Party historically has lagged in, where the highest propensity voters historically had voted more Republican. Now that has started to change in the day and age of uh, the resurgence of Democratic support in suburbia, uh, you know, the maxing out of rural areas for Republicans that aren't the most likely groups to vote. Uh, and so Democrats have started to see that walked back. Regardless, though, they still hold a significant chunk of the American public that is considered to be low propensity voters. You're talking about uh, y young college students that live in, live in cities. You're talking about minority voters that live in cities. You're talking about minority voters in general. You're finding that what we know, if you took a high school civics class, as you'll remember, is that what we were taught and what stands to be true today is the most likeliest group to vote when it comes down to racial demographics is white voters. The most likeliest group to vote when it comes down to economic factors are wealthier voters. The most likely group to vote when it comes down to age factors are older voters. And historically, again, Republicans had done quite well with older, whiter, uh, you know, uh, wealthier voters. But now that has started to change. But when it comes down to that point of where Democrats can really start to do higher turnout, mail-in voting increases voter participation no matter how you cut it. Giving Democrats that are inspired and excited to vote in an election, and obviously this is an opportunity that is afforded to every, every single citizen that has mail-in ballots uh, in their state. But what it does specifically to Democrats who are totally fine voting by mail is that they have a month to submit their ballot. They have all the convenience and all of the time factors really on their side. They don't have to take off work for election day. They don't have to wait in two, three, four hour line longs uh, because that's how mail-in ballots work. They have the convenience factor of it all, and they know how to do the mail-in ballots from the 2020 presidential election. It also helps, too. When it comes down to early voting for the Democratic Party, a big reason why early voting is just so beneficial for the Democratic Party is that it allows Democrats who are excited uh, and really inspired to turn out to turn out early on. So that way, when canvassers come around, when phone bankers come around, when the Democratic Party is returned that information about who's voting, who's not, that means less resources being allocated on people who have already submitted their ballot. That means less resources have been allocated on people who they already know are going to vote for their respective party nominee and have voted either in person or by by mail-in ballots, it makes the Democratic Party able to be more focused and targeted on swing voters, on low propensity voters, on voters that might only be willing to vote on election day. That is what mail-in ballots do and help the Democratic Party at large when they are consistently outpacing Republicans. And a big part of this, too, is the fact that in the 2020 presidential election, Donald Trump rejected the notion that mail-in ballots were legitimate forms of voting. So a lot of Republicans are really afraid to do any mail-in ballots because Donald Trump sold them on this idea that Democrats were changing their votes after they submitted their mail-in ballots. The Democrats were going out there and shipping in new mail-in ballots uh, under the names of registered voters in the state. And so he encouraged a very big push to vote on Election Day to vote in early voting in person, to not allow mail-in ballots to be accepted. And he tried to do this big push back in 2020, and it ended up really working against them. What we saw in the aftermath was that Democrats took a risk when it came down to push mail-in voting. Democrats took a risk that could have jeopardized their possibility of winning the election, but it very, very much paid off. And it paid off again in 2022 when we saw a very interesting uh, debacle breakdown where we saw that mail-in ballots again were a big reason why Democrats were able to get voters out there in the first place. We saw instances like in Nevada where on the day of the election, there was a snowstorm 
Well, when there's a snowstorm on the day of the election, it becomes more difficult to get out and vote. And considering how narrow that margin was, I'm not a big person who likes to say the weather changes elections because historically they have it and studies show that they have a really negligible effect. But when there's a bad snowstorm on the day of an election and you've had a month to vote by mail, but Donald Trump is telling you not to, you may be less inclined to vote because you don't know if you can get to the ballot box. Let's say your power goes out at your home because of this snowstorm. Is your concern going to be, I'm going to drive to the polling place when my children and family are freezing in our home? These are the considerations and options people weigh. It also comes down to those arguments. If it's raining on election day, are people more likely to vote? If you're sick on election day, are you likely to get off, uh, you know, off your bed uh, out there to vote for Donald Trump? All of these different things are things that the Republican Party started to realize Maybe this isn't the way to win elections. And so they spent millions upon millions of dollars to encourage Republicans to cast mail-in ballots. But what we know, based off this early set of data that we have, the returns and the returns by political party, is that Democrats are demolishing Republicans in these battleground states so far. In Florida, Democrats outpacing independents and Republicans. Republicans by eight points, independents by five. In Pennsylvania, nearly double the amount of Democrats have requested absentee ballots compared to Republicans. Now, Pennsylvania is a state where Donald Trump and the Republican Party changed their tune. You can see it at all the rallies. The Butler rally we just saw, they have it on their screen. Make a plan to vote. Vote by mail. Vote absentee. They want to encourage this. Why? Because they know that there are circumstances that might result in people not voting on election day. They also know there are circumstances where they will be spending time and money on and, and resources on calling, on door knocking, at trying to get out voters that were already going to vote. But it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money because they're unwilling to vote now when they could just check that off and say, this person's already voted. You can spend that time elsewhere. You can spend that time like Democrats are doing on battleground state voters. You can spend that money on voters that are on the fence rather than voters that are already going to turn out for you, which is why, again, it really does matter as to how these ballots, uh, you know, really are being requested and who is requesting them in the first place. You can see it, too, in other states as well across the board. These mail-in ballots have been pretty strong for the Democratic Party in almost every single state. You can see it. I don't even think there's a single state where Republicans are rivaling that of Democrats. And that comes down to that fundamental problem and flaw in the system that Donald Trump built was that voters on the GOP side are significantly less likely to trust mail-in ballot voting, and thus they don't vote. I remember also very early on in the 2021 Georgia runoff elections, Donald Trump, his entire spiel after the 2020 election, Georgia was stolen. If you're a Republican who believes Donald Trump's word to be law and you trust him as the former president, I'm saying this because there are a lot of voters out there that absolutely do see Donald Trump's word as law. And he says Georgia is rigged. Why would you vote in a runoff? Why would you participate in a system that you do believe to be fundamentally undemocratic? It's a defeatist attitude that results in Republicans losing. And that's the exact reason why when it came down to mail-in voting, Democrats did the messaging on it right. Republicans did the messaging on it wrong. And when it comes down to the narrowest of states, absolutely, it matters that Democrats did this correctly, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, where in 2020, if you had COVID in October, October 20th, you were not going to be cleared by CDC guidelines to get out and vote in person by election day. So voting by mail was your only option. And if you had already done it, and let's say you were sick October 20th through November 6th. You missed election day, you're quarantining, you're not getting out there, but you voted by mail on October 13th. That matters. That helps the Democratic Party. That helps get out the vote. But I'm sure there were Republicans out there that simply did not get out to vote because they did not have the means to, or because they waited too long, didn't vote by mail in person, or didn't buy vote, vote by mail early enough, wanted to vote in person, is what I meant to say here, and just simply didn't get around to doing it. This is a story that can be told across thousands of voters. Now, do I think it changed the overall outcome of the election? I really don't know. But all I do know is that in 2020, it took a combination of a multitude of factors that benefited Biden and the Democratic Party to go from what was a Republican trifecta in 2017 to a Democratic trifecta in 2021. These things don't happen by accident. The Democratic Party knew this was their pathway to victory, and Democrats know it is their pathway to victory yet again. And so when we see this early voting and the absentee ballots requested so far, it's a really good sign. It's a really, really good sign for Democrats. And when you're taking a look, too, at some of these states that are going to reach likely on par with that of 2020, right, getting close to it, anywhere close to 2020 is good news for Democrats because replicating that election is how Democrats win. Michigan's a perfect example. You can see that, you know, just under 40% of the state itself requested absentee ballots in the 2020 election. Michigan is already at 26%. Right, Florida is over halfway to their 2020 rate. Pennsylvania is around halfway to their 2020 rate. 
These are things that really do make a difference, and Democrats are winning that war when it comes down to absentee ballots requested by party. Voters are more inclined on the Democratic side to vote by mail, and again, that's something that Democrats really do benefit from. And when it comes down to the narrowest and narrowest of these swing states, if voters are getting out there and, you know, people are volunteering, they're door knocking, they're organizing, they're phone banking. If the Republican Party is spending that many X hours wasting their time on voters that are already going to vote for them, but just simply refuse to vote by mail because of Donald Trump, that will be a failure on their end. Because Democrats now have the ability to do more micro-targeting more intense canvassing efforts, more intense phone banking efforts on people who they know haven't requested an absentee, who they know haven't voted already. And that's where Democrats really will be able to use their resources and time more effectively than the Republican Party because of this fundamental disagreement on the security and validity of mail-in voting. And again, considering these 2020 margins, look about how close these margins were in Biden versus Trump land, right? Pennsylvania was Democrat plus 1.2. Georgia was Democrat plus 0.2. North Carolina was Republican plus 1.3. Michigan was Democrat plus 2.8. Arizona was Democrat plus 0.3. Wisconsin was Democrat plus 0.6. Nevada was Democrat plus 2.4. I know it's probably getting annoying hearing me talk about these margins constantly and always, but it really does matter. And when you look at it from the lens of political perspective of how do you win a campaign? The way the Democrats are operating and have been operating with all this encouraging mail-in ballots from the very beginning, never rejecting the notion that they were secure or safe ways of voting, Democrats from the 2020 election set themselves up not only for victory in that race, but in this one too, where a lot of voters have realized the convenience of voting early and voting by mail. And they're doing so. And Democrats are winning that war. And I wouldn't be shocked if it came down to some of these battleground states. I do think there's a really strong possibility Kamala Harris wins Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin by less than she did in 2020, right? Or, or Biden did, right? I do believe there's a possibility that Donald Trump wins in a state like Arizona, wins in a state like Georgia, wins in a state like North Carolina. But if Kamala Harris can turn out and mobilize her base the same way that we saw Biden do in 2020, you can see, I mean, just filling out this map here, the numbers and the math is there for a Democratic victory. Enough so that it leaves Democrats in a really strong position to win in this race. And what do we find? A map like this is very plausible. A map like this is very possible in a way that many Republicans were really just hoping just simply wasn't there. But now the Democrats are, you know, running ahead of Republicans in Pennsylvania, a state that they have invested tens of millions of dollars in. I kid you not. Republicans have invested tens of millions of dollars in get out the vote efforts now, right? Getting voters out to vote by mail, getting voters out to vote in elections that, uh, you know, maybe they weren't inclined to vote in before and also in mediums and in pathways that they weren't inclined to vote in before, voting by mail, requesting that absentee ballot, or voting in person early, right? Doing all these things that Donald Trump told them not to, that Donald Trump is now trying to walk his word back on and say do, but that trust and lack of trust, rather, is so ingrained deeply because the entire argument was we won the 2020 election, but Democrats stole it because of mail-in voting. So why would you be inclined to mail-in vote? And like I said, the money being spent in Pennsylvania very clearly is not being, you know, worthwhile, being spent worthwhile. The money is not paying off. The return on investment just simply isn't there because Democrats are outpacing Republicans over, you know, two to one in Pennsylvania. That is massive, if you ask me. I mean, that is something that I really think Republicans are going to look back upon and say, how in the world did we screw this up? There's a common denominator, but I doubt they'll get to that resolution. And so they'll try to do something else. But it is clear and has been clear as day. On the topics like this, like early mail ballot requests, Democrats really do defeat the Republican Party in elections and in the early mail-in votes because of situations like this and circumstances that have surrounded all of our conversations, all of our predictions, all of our different levels of uh, discussion on mail-in voting and its impact in elections. Everyone's been saying, do Democrats or Republicans benefit from vote by mail? This is an article from 2020. And what did we learn after? This is May 25th, 2020. It's complicated. And then it wasn't because Democrats did better. Democrats turned out their base and voter enthusiasm now is at an all time high for Democrats. And so when they look at these numbers and they look at the 69% level of approval, one of the highest we have seen higher than in 2020, higher than in 2016, higher than in 2012, even higher than some polls in 2008, which is fascinating, higher than in 2008. The enthusiasm for Kamala Harris is something that Democrats can and will tap into. 
And when voters are more enthusiastic to request that ballot, to submit that vote and then tell a Democratic, you know, door knocker that comes to the door, I've already voted. My friends have already voted. My household has already voted because we voted by mail. That's one less door to knock on. That's four less voters to convince. And that's more money that can be spent elsewhere. That's time that can be spelt elsewhere. And Democrats are capitalizing on this enthusiasm and doing what they did best in 2020. And that was vote and vote in a way that won them the presidential election. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the top left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.